Philippians 3, verses 12 through 21. Um, Not that I have already reached the goal or am already fully mature, but I make every effort to take hold of it because I also have been taken hold of by Jesus Christ. Brothers, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead. I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Therefore, all who are mature should think this way. And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this also to you. In any case, we should live up to whatever truth we have attained. Join in in imitating me, join in imitating me, brothers, and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For I have often told you, and now say again with tears, that many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their stomach, their glory is in their shame. They are focused on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humble condition into the likeness of his glorious body by the power that enables him to subject everything to himself. All right. Thank you, Morgie. Is he handsome? So we got good looking people in the church, don't we? Look at those little blessings that all up. Yeah, I think we've got the cutest kids in the how how can I say that? In the county. We got the cutest kids in the county. <laughs> You guys are all pretty handsome and beautiful. And then some of you older people, you're not bad either, hey? (laughs) All right, so here we go. Now, from that reading, when it comes to pointing out where God's leading us in Scripture, even for this morning, when it comes to your goal in life, or what are your goals, what are some of the first things that come to mind? Okay, that was easy. How about some, uh, what are some of your goals or some of the goals that we put on our kids? Right, oftentimes we put these expectations on our kids like your education, which is important. But how important? How about your occupation? Right, is our occupation important? It is. Your family, your finances. Like you think when you're when we're all racing around in the villa next door when we're in our 95, when we're 95 years old, does it really matter in some ways, you know, when you spend time with these people? You know, it is neat to sometimes hear, I like to sit and listen to, you know, the past and the history of how things were built and how things were made and that kind of thing. But usually when you're in your 90s and if you can remember them, it's not that important. Right, so where I'm going to kind of dial us in and focus into what you know beyond what is our goal while God has given us breath and has set us apart, because God, we need to all see the bigger picture of what God has in store for each and every one of us. So you know that God has a purpose and a plan for your life. If you don't first come to that realization that God has set you apart. For something bigger than you, we got some places we got to start there at least, right? And we got to allow God to, you know, to enter our dream life and look, you know, think bigger than who we are, right? And say, hey, God, you've called me, you've set me apart. Why have you placed me here in Beaver County, Alberta? You guys know why God has set you here in Beaver County, Alberta. Sometimes I question that myself when it's minus 40. But why? Because there's a community of people that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? We have work to do. So we're going to continue to build upon that. So, often in lives, does it ever seem that you set these patterns or these goals like eating healthy or exercising and we fall short? Right? It's like when there's cinnamon buns coming and burgers and I fall short quite often. But those come back to kind of where the things are. Do those really, really matter at the end of the day? Yes, there's some truth to being healthy and all that kind of stuff. But 
Is it that important? What is the greatest message coming out of your life? I hope it's bigger than a cinnamon bun. Right? Hmm. God has a purpose for your life and will use it for good. All right. So, here we are reaching forward to God's goal. When you position yourself on this planet, knowing that God has a purpose and a plan for your life, now that's the thing that we're going to focus and dial in on and say, okay, God, you have your hand upon me. You've given me the gifts. You've given me these talents. What am I going to do with it? Right? And what is the bigger picture? So, in verse 12 it says, not that I have, this is Paul writing, not that I have already reached the goal or am fully mature, but I make every effort to take hold of it. Hmm. Paul has set his mind and his life and dial it in in so much where you're, you're, you're zoned in to what God has for your life and your, your calling. Right? Because does anybody ever get distracted? Like, being distracted sometimes is funny, right? Like, when I'm driving down the road, usually going into Edmonton, you know, I get distracted. And my wife's like, where are you going? And I'm like, that's a great question, right? But at the end of the bigger picture in life, where am I dialing my life and my purpose in on and raising up a mighty family of God and keeping my eyes fixed on Jesus? Am I getting distracted and I need to, you know, on a gun you have the sights where you can sight up and down and side to side. It's like keep dialing ourselves into what God has because what God has and what God's kingdom offers is way greater than anything that we can taste and feel or on this world. Right? The world and the things that of this world are so temporary, but what God can dial us into is something so much greater. All right. So, bullseye. When we have our sights finely tuned, now keeping it sighted throughout the storms of life and taking, when we take a hard hit or the dirt or debris in life, dulling our lenses to see clearly. Right? We've got to know that once we have our lives, we give our lives to Jesus. Now, what's going to continue to keep us focused and sighted in? Well, He places you in a body of Christ. Right? How we need each other. Each and every part is needed. Right? Because what happens is when somebody gets led astray or distracted, we got a brother and sister there to say, Hey, where have you been? Right? Because the, the gathering of the saints is very important. Right? And yes, we're living in days and there's curveballs to that right now. But the importance of gathering is super important because what happens when we stop continuing to have our eyes fixed on the one true God and the, you know, we allow these distractions to start taking our time and our energy and our efforts and we got to think, okay, why am I doing what I am doing? Am I distracted? So now allow yourself to. This is a the big part that we'll talk about next is humility. When somebody comes to you and say that you're distracted, how are you going to receive that? Like, hey, where was the last? I haven't seen you in church for a while. Where have you been? Well, I've been working. For what? Maybe there's a time and a place that you're, yes, you have to work, but putting God first often looks like putting the one day aside to give Him the honor and glory. And to encourage our family needs to come to church, right? And we're going to keep, <clears throat> there's a closing song here that I'm excited about even too, right? How, how it seems like, is it easy to grab and pull our family to church on Sunday? To wake up out of bed in the morning and say, it's Sunday morning! Do any kids truthfully like getting up early on Sunday morning? It is true, it is a sleeping day for many of us. Who really sleeps in past 8 o'clock? 8.30 today. Now that's sleeping in, right? Some of the older people are like, you weren't up at 5? Five? 5. I get up not to get up at that time. I go up and come right back and tuck myself in, right? Right? What is, you know, just knowing the importance of keeping the disciplines to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. So, how do we stay sighted in? 
It's in God's Word. God has plans for our lives, and throughout all the storms and the trials and the difficulties and the circumstances, stay in and, close, and stay close to God's Word. Right? It's amazing how just even the verse of the day will speak live and clear each and every day. You know, one of the first things when you just roll out of bed and you turn, look out in the verse of the day, and it's like, wow, how that is speaking to me in this situation and in this moment. And as you dive into that. But in these days when there's storms, what do we, is God always faithful? In the good times and the bad, God is faithful. Right now, I don't see some in some areas in my life or wherever where I'm like, God, this is kind of challenging in my own walk, but yet you are faithful. You're going to use this for good. And I stand on God's word. Same for all of us. When we're going through these challenges of life and when people are mean to us and they hurt us or they persecute us, we just go back to God's word. Talk about forgiveness. How important it is if when people hurt us, we are to forgive. No matter how mean they are or what they have done, our responsibility as children of God, God's Word teaches us that we have to forgive them. And that's a big... It's easier to say it sometimes than to walk it out. All right, now, so it says in verse 12 to 16, it says, Now that I have already reached the goal or am fully mature, but I make every effort to take hold of it because I have been taken hold of by Christ Jesus. Brothers, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead. It's amazing. This is just revealing the humility of Paul. And Paul's writing all these scriptures, and there's a picture that I see that's quite different than I listen to some theologians, right? I listen to theologians, and they can, that's a part to play, but sometimes they downplay the other parts of the body where sometimes they look at it, it's like they kind of portray that they know so much. Like, if you would actually study that word in the Greek, you would have the understanding of this part and this part, and you would know this, what it meant in Hebrew. You're like, okay. So, are you trying to elevate yourself in your knowledge? Because ultimately... He is the King of Kings. He is the, and the Holy Spirit lives in me. And the same Holy Spirit that lives in me is living in you. So why have we got this scale of that your knowledge is actually better than mine? Well, you may be trained in some ways, but yet that humility is a huge part to play. And our differences should not allow those things to come and say, well, that person is so amazing. Well, they may have words that are amazing, but yet they're not to take that position of look at me. It's always no matter what revelation God gives you, it's always look at Him. Look at God. Look at God. God, yes, God gave me these words for you. Awesome. Now what are you going to do with it? Are you going to receive these words and we're going to give God the honor and the glory? Because this is a... Humility is huge. James 3.13 says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Right? You might have wisdom... But what happens is if people don't see you walk the talk, your words mean nothing. So humility is you walk the talk and you also, you know it's like, hey, I only do what my Heavenly Father tells me to do. I only say what my Heavenly Father tells me to say. So as you can see that Paul is saying, God has totally set me apart. He's given me all this revelation. I'm writing the books of the Bible. But he's also claiming, he's like, I don't know everything. Right? Who am I? God has placed me, and I'm just a servant of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Pride is a big part where we have to learn to stay away from. It says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. Right? When we remain and position our lives in a place of being teachable, you'll learn something. right? And the young generation, you know, they got to they got to wake up, open their eyes and say, okay, so how do these old people, because you're looking around the room or you think of these old people, how did they get to where they are in life? Well, guess what? They have experience and they can, they can actually tell you something. But if you come in like this, you know, I'm this young, how much do you think they're going to pour into you? But when you come in low and you come in loving and kind, these old people will always most often 
pour their lives into you. And you will receive amazing wisdom. <clears throat> it's like kind of when I was a, way back in the day of, remember when it was 1999? I guess some of you got to remember that. Was somebody not born in 1999 yet? Wow. But I remember, who remembers the years when all of a sudden the world is going to come to an end? Why? Because it was going to turn to zero, zero, zero. That was some time ago, hey? But there's a few of us that remember that. But yet, are we still here? Interesting. But I remember a time when I took my apprenticeship. I went in to this one place and I took under, uh, I was just placed in, uh, as a welder, an apprenticeship, uh, apprenticeship, and there was a guy that I could see that his lifestyle was really rough, but yet the fruit of his workmanship was like I've never seen before. So what I did was I came under and lo, and I honored that guy, and he poured his skill into me, and I was like 16, 17 years old, welding just like him. How did that happen? Humility, right? And when you continue to walk that out, all of a sudden you're a teenager and you're a foreman and you're leading people that are twice, three times your age. How does that happen? Humility. But as soon as you think that all of a sudden you're here, because that's a really tough to be, place to be. When you're half these people's age and you're their boss, if you get prideful, you're going to end up that no one is working for you. But humility... And you pull out the gold in everybody, right? That's a huge part. So that's for us as a church too, is remain humble. Learn from each other. And knowing that each and every one has gone through some stuff in life, that we don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. It's like, what can I learn from somebody? Have you gone, like anybody gone through a traveling time? Anyone gone through a wayward son or a daughter? Guess what? There's many people in the house. So then you go to those people and say, hey, can you pray for me? Can you help me? Give me some wisdom. How did you get through this? And it's here. We're very wealthy spiritually in this church. Psalms 25, 8-9 Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore He instructs sinners in His ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them His way. It's huge. Continuing to just listen to God's Word. And this is where that understanding comes from when people say, you know, where I share, my opinions don't really matter. My thoughts got to align to God's Word because I want God to instruct me. If I start bringing my worldly thinking in, I won't receive the kingdom ideas and the, the kingdom knowledge, right? What does God think? How does God think? It's, well, or... How does He move? It's in God's Word. And He'll reveal it if we come to it in a place to learn and to be guided. It's huge. So here, strong people don't put others down. They lift them up. Hmm. It's a great picture. So when we look around, this is our job and our responsibility to each and every one of us. Because each and every one of us, you're going to get knocked down. Because this world that we're living in is not easy. That's why you all have a responsibility to reach out to your brothers and sisters. Send them a text. Call them. How you doing? What's going on? How can I pray for you? Take them out for a burger. Big boy burger. I wonder if you can even do that now. Well, whatever. Maybe next week. Right? Spend time with the young people. Spend time with the older people. Learn each other, right? And knowing that if God lays someone on your heart, He's just, He says, can I entrust you with this? There's a person that's hurting and broken. So send them a text. Give them a call. Do whatever it is. And it's amazing how even when we're raising up a family, right? When we, you know, giving us the idea, when we dedicate children to the Lord as a church family, what does that mean? That means that each and every one of us has a responsibility to help guide that child in the way that they should go. So sometimes, sometimes, just only sometimes, our kids not necessarily listen to mom and dad, right? Majority of the time, yes, mom, yes, dad. Let's just hear it. Kids, say, yes, mom. Okay, no, 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 no. That was mom saying, yes, mom. No, 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 no. Kid, that's what we want them to say, but just, okay. Kids, 
On, let's see how loud, this is a chance we can be the loudest we can be in church. Say, yes, mom. Okay, one, two, three. Yes, mom. Yeah, see, they can say it. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> okay, another one. Are you guys ready to be loud? On the count of three, we're going to say, yes, dad. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Yes, Dad! Oh, see? They can say it. Now for all of us, one, two, three. Yes, Jesus. One, two, three. Yes, Jesus! Because that's where it starts. If we can learn to honor our moms and our dads in God's instructions, now as we rise up into the mature people that God wants us to be, we walk in obedience to Him. Hmm. Interesting. That's why in rebellion, we got to nip it in the butt. Where's that saying come from? Nip it in the butt. What's that mean anyway? Whatever. Spanking. Hmm. Okay. Now, I pursue as my goal in verses 14 to 16 the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Therefore, all who are mature should think this way. And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this also to you. In any case, we should live up to whatever truth we have attained. When we highlight the bottom of that verse there, we are without excuse in many ways because when we attend a church that opens the Word of God and reads verse by verse, chapter by chapter, we've heard it. We know the truth. We know what God is saying. We know what we're to do. But yet sometimes, only sometimes, right, we stray. But it says, no, no, no. God, no, we know the truth. And the truth will set us free. And we've got to stand on it. Right? We've got to continue to open up God's Word. Right? And also, allow God, sometimes in these disputable matters where we're talking about a marriage and a relationship and don't let those little things that don't matter, don't matter. Well, guess what? Allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to that person that, you know what? That really didn't matter. What color we paint the walls really doesn't matter. What we have on the floor doesn't really matter. Right? The way that if you like this type of food or if you drink this type of beverage, none of that matters. At the end of the day, we're drawn to God's Word and the Spirit of God will lead us in unity. That's a huge part. Don't get caught up in those traps. So, now for us, in reading through God's Word, it says, I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. So ask yourself, why am I here? Why am I here? April... 11th, 11.25, in the morning. Why are you here? That's true. Why are you here? Mama's bringing you here because she wants to see a mighty woman and a mighty boy and a mighty family rise up into God's calling. Right? That's why we come here to train our young. And sometimes it's not easy to bring the young because they see that's like, Mom and Dad keep on dragging me to church. Well, guess what? There's going to be fruit in Mom and Dad sometimes dragging you to church. Or husbands and wives. Sometimes, like, before Jarrett was a pastor, I had the tendency to go to a confession again. Bedside assembly. It's like... She'd be like... Oh, mm. uh, it's Sunday. Yeah, it's a good day. Yeah, I, mean, I don't have to go to work today. Like, Great. We're going to church. I'm like, oh. Oh, okay. There was times in our walk where it felt like she was dragging me to church. Truthfully. But when I got there, there was always something God was working and stirring and moving in me that, wow, once I finally got there, it actually wasn't that bad, right? Like, is it not bad now that you're here? Not bad. Right? We've got to trust that God is planting those seeds no matter what stage we're in. That if we're getting pulled and tugged, we're hearing the Word of God and the, lie, the Word of God is a lie. So this is why we're here. And now we're aligning our lives and our thoughts 
and our attitudes and our choices to God's heavenly calling. Right? Set your thoughts and your minds on things above. So when we get out of here and we have our conversations, what are our conversations? Thinking more about things of this world. How many people are going to come into the kingdom of God because we continue to have our church doors open? We continue to reach out and spend time with people that are hurt, lost, and broken. Huge. All right, so now carrying on. Hmm. Verses 17, it says, Join in imitating me, brothers, and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. When I read that, it pointed to the people in my past, and some of them that are passed away, like my great or my grandma or grandmama. My grandmama. I'm a mama's boy, so I say mama. I'm a mama's boy. But to see the mighty men and women of God that have been placed in my life that have set the example, they're huge. They're like pillars in my life that, you know, I don't even know what they did for work, but I've seen the faith that they lived out through me as a young boy growing up in this community. Interesting. So now the challenge is, is who are these the next generation seeing as those pillars? Right? Challenge each other. Let's rise up into that. How can I take time out of my day to pray for the young generation or spend time with them, take them out, buy them a Tim Hortons? We have a Tim Hortons in Tofield. Should be going... But it's huge. Join in imitating me. Well, that not necessarily all of our bad habits. But <clears throat> we use those as an opportunity to take somebody out. Spend some time with somebody. Pray for somebody. Somebody that feels that they are all alone. They got nobody. Guess what? No, we got a family of God that loves you. Right? Alright, carrying on. For I have often told you and now say again with tears. This is Paul. He's in prison thinking that we should be you know, feeling compassion, but he's actually writing this and has tears saying this, that many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. We live in these days. You don't have to go very far and you will see it. Many live as enemies of the cross. How are we going to raise our kids in a generation and an education system all of the, ed, like, there's many education systems, there's many things that are set up by our government that point up and oppose what the teachings of God are. Many live as enemies of the cross. But listen to the fruit of this. It says here, their end is destruction, their God is their stomach, their glory is in their shame, and they are focused on earthly things. God, transform even us as a church family, our conversations. When we leave, what are we focusing in on? You know, I came back from a mission and I remember coming back and, you know, the topic was, okay, we're going to have a youth uh, meeting so we can have a youth, you know, in our church. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really think that's what we need. Why? Because at that time, every other amazing church had a great youth program. So why are we trying to have ours and make it our own? Well, maybe if that was what God was doing and He wanted that, but He says no. At that time, it was felt like, let's bring in the family. The moms and the dads, the grandmas, the grandpas, and the young children. And there's people here today that experience that, and there was a richness of it. Right? Where all of a sudden we'd separate in different, you know, remember the times when we'd send like the crazy kids to Shauna's table. Because she could handle it. She's like, I'm like, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. But she could grab these little squirrels Put them all together and the kids were learning. I'm like, do not put me at that table. Oh, goodness. Because then I'd be another squirrel. And we'd be having, let's just send us to the gym. Right? But God used that in a time where, okay, the older men would take the time out and spend some time with some younger men. And the younger men, now guess what? Younger men, guess what? The world isn't all about you. Or younger ladies. Who can I pour my life into because we have a whole pile of young boys in our midst that would love a big brother. Right? My big brother, in my own family, he died. So I looked up to a cousin. and He was like my idol growing up. And how I would do whatever he told me to do. I loved whatever he loved. It was like, God, 
use that illustration even in our own church where we have young adults actually wanting to spend with the teenagers. Because being a teenager, no matter what, it is not easy. You're trying to, your brain's developing, your hormones are going on. These people need you. And yet we send our people out to the world and say, okay, oh my goodness, no wonder their thoughts are, it's just torment. Because their thinking and the world's thinking is so different than the way that God's created us to think. So we got to be encouraged. Say, God, you placed me here. Look around. Who can I spend time with? I challenge you guys. This is another challenge. Does everybody in the room, when you look around, do you know everybody's name? Right? we got work to do. We can put this in action. All right. <clears throat> now moving on. But our citizenship is in heaven. Right? When we think that is, heaven is our home. We're just visiting. Right now, we're just visiting. But yet, while God, while God has placed us here, we have work to do. We're here to let His light shine in everything that we do. And in the good times, we praise the Lord. In the bad times, we praise the Lord. In our struggles, we continue to lift and we stand on God. And we're going to do this together as a body of Christ. It says, but our citizen citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for a savior the lord jesus christ he will transform the body of our humble condition into the likeness of his glorious body by the power that enables him to subject everything to himself so continue to run the race it says in hebrews 12 1 to 2 let us run with endurance the race that is set before us fixing our eyes on Jesus. Huge. Right? Keeping your eyes on Jesus. Not allowing distractions to come in. Keep our, when you wake up in the morning, you know, aligning yourself with God's Word and saying, okay, what do you have for me today? God, eliminate the distractions. Let me stay focused on what you have for me. It says... In Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, verse 7, it says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So this is a blessing that we as a church family have even having a cemetery. Because when you're cutting grass, sometimes bumping the stones, and you're not paying attention, I get distracted. But you read the verses that are on people's headstones. And a lot of times it is this. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Right? What verse or what is going to be said of you on your headstone? Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll all be taken up right now or this afternoon. We don't know the day or the hour the Lord is going to come. But right now, there's a day that we're going to be born, that we were born, and there's a day that we're going to be passed away. What do you want people to remember you as? And I always, you know, challenge myself. I want to hear God. Well done, good and faithful servant. So in order to hear that, we've got to be doing what He wants us to be doing. In 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24, do you, know, uh, do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Being a Christian takes discipline. Right? Right? Spending time in God's Word. Setting the time aside where you like, you know what, I could watch this next TV show or YouTube video or so on or whatever you, that's called. Set the time aside. Open God's Word. Challenge one another. Hey, what Bible study are you guys doing? Hey, the women right now are going through an amazing Bible study. How about the men? Men, how are we doing on our Bible study? Well, we got work to do. Keep. That's right. Let's start it. Let's get it going. Get the ball rolling. Men spending time reading their Bibles. Yes. Right? Setting that time. Why is that so important? Right? Now, youth. What are we going to do for our youth? What are we going to do for the next generation? Keep pouring in God's Word. What's going to set us apart and arm ourselves in the days that we're living in. Because we need to know and be aware of the days. It's huge. Okay, so now, 
We're closing. What is your goal? Keep your eyes on Jesus. Over and over we've been saying this. Right? And also now, taking that time, it's like sometimes we don't necessarily see the fruit in our lives or how we pour our lives into our kids or the next generation, but we just got to stand on the promises in God that His Word never returns void. And those words of truth are being planted, even in these little children. The Word of God is being planted and will produce fruit. Amen? How important. So continue to just be encouraged in these days, right? To keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep praying for others. Right now, right now, <clears throat> the families, the relationships, there's so much turmoil. We need to surround each other in prayer, covering each other, lifting each other up in prayer, but also now reaching out. How can I reach out to my brother and sister that may be lonely, might be broken, might be hurt? So just take some of these challenges as we fix our eyes on Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, thank You for Your Word. Thank You for Your leading. I just pray that You'll continue to open our eyes to see the bigger picture. And Father God, the the reward that we have in heaven as we surrender our lives to serving You. Father God, we just pray that Holy Spirit, You will speak to us and that You will lead people to us and in our direction that we can be Your very hands and Your feet. And Father God, we just pray that through our hands that Your kingdom come, Your will be done. Even as we lay hands on people, Father God, for prayer that people will be healed Hmm. sickness, minds will be transformed. It got, it'll, just, it'll just be pointing people back to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father God, we just thank You for this church. Thank You for the building that You've given us. We just pray for protection. Thank You for the daycare that happens throughout the week. We just pray a protection over that. Thank You for the leaders and the people that serve. We just are just so honored and so thankful. And we just pray that You will just protect us here out in the country that We can remain open and continue to proclaim the greatness of who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we've got a little different closing song. Just listen to the words and be encouraged.